Uh, first thing we'd like to do is we will ask uh, our vice chair to uh, offer a prayer and lead us in Pledge of Allegiance. And I'd also like to congratulate him for his victory, along with uh, Linda Hoffler. And I'd also like to thank the uh, other two candidates back there for caring enough about G Gates County to put an effort in to become a commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank everyone for all your support. Let us pray. Father, we come this morning thanking you, Lord, for your grace and mercy, for your blessings, and allow us, Lord, to live in this nation. We thank you for this nation, and we thank you, Lord, for what you've done in, in allowing the leaders to be elected that's been elected. We ask your guidance and direction, and we ask your blessings upon this meeting. Help us in all that we do. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I officially call this meeting to order. Uh, we got uh, approval of the agenda on, as the first item on the agenda. We've got to make one change. Uh, Mr. Epley from uh, Martin Starnes doing our audit presentation needs to get out of here pretty quick, so we're going to move him up to after the uh, approval of the minutes. And that's right now, that's the only change we have. If not, if no other questions, we'll uh, entertain a motion to accept the agenda as, as amended. So moved. We've got second. a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. All right, next on the agenda, the approval of the minutes. You've got the minutes in front of you. I hope you had a chance to look over them. Are there any adjustments to the minutes that need to be made? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to accept the October 3rd, 2012 regular board meeting minutes and the special meeting minutes for October the 12th uh, be accepted as submitted. All right, we have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. All right, uh, next on there we'll uh, welcome Mr. Brian Epley from Martin Starnes and present our audit presentation. morning. Is the mic not on? Push that button. There you Is go. Is now? Is that better? I don't know how long to say. Can you hear me? Is that better? Okay. Um, first, I'd like to thank down the down board uh, for once again for letting. Jack, Jack pass that uh, manila pa uh, folder down here to Henry. He didn't get one. Uh, for letting us serve once again as the, the county's auditor. Um, it's our fourth year uh, working with the county, and every year has been a, a progressive step, and we're very appreciative of the opportunity. Uh, I'd like to thank Toby and Sandy and Marie, and, um, everyone that, that works in the finance office. Um, we, um, we had a, a very pleasant experience this year. What I do is I'll just walk through these slides, and then I'll open it up to, uh, to some questions um, and um, any comments you may have. Um, our first slide here just, just gives a, an illustration of, of how the audit uh, results were. We issued an unqualified opinion, um, which is basically as, as good as you can get. Um, and that means that we, we didn't have any kind of qualifications that would make us issue a, any kind of negative response or opinion to the financial statements that were issued. And again, you know, thanks for a, a very cooperative staff, um, very pleasant experience. Here's a summary of the general fund revenues and expenditures with comparative numbers from the prior year, 2011. Um, relatively uh, comparable numbers, um, no, no major changes with, it, with either uh, revenues or expenditures. Uh, as of last year, uh, the GASB, which is the, the governmental accounting standards board that, that issues the standards and the statutes that, that we're required to, uh, to audit by, um, issued GASB 54, which changed the, the fund balance classification um, that, that historically had been used. 
So now we, we, we report uh, via non-spendable, restricted, committed, assigned, and unassigned. This is the, the change in total fund balance in the general fund, um, an increase of 174.079 in the current year for an ending fund balance of 3.579394. This is um, uh, what the, the LGC, as of last year when they changed the, the fund balance classification uh, to the five new ones, they also changed what they used to calculate their percentage. Um, it had previously been done as unassigned fund balance compared to expenditures. Now they use what is called available fund balance. And the way you calculate available fund balance is <clears throat> you take total fund balance less your non-spendable, which is anything that physically can't be spent, prepaid, inventory, things that aren't in liquid form. Um, and then you also subtract stabilization by state statute, which is an LGC calculation that they provide. Um, and you arrive at available fund balance. And what the LGC does is, is they use that available fund balance divided by your your uh, total general fund expenditures to get a, a percentage, um, and that percentage reflects months that you could operate with zero revenues uh, just based on equity. Um, it gives a, a, an okay illustration of your financial health. For Gates County, the total fund balance at the end of the fiscal year was 3.5, roughly. Um, stabilization was 640,000. That's primarily compiled of, of sales tax um, and other uh, non-liquid receivables. Um, so available fund balance was 2.938979. Uh, that's an increase of 267,830 from the prior year. This is your percentage that I was referring to. Um, Gates County is, is in its peer group um, as far as uh, population uh, and, and what the LGC kind of tracks and recommends, 28% uh, at the end of the current year. And what that means is, is that um, Available fund balance represents 28% of a total year's expenditures in the general fund. Here's a visual of the top three revenues. Obviously, ad valorem um, and then local option and restricted are the, are the large three. They make up 94% of the total revenues. And the following three slides will uh, just give a, some comparison uh, current year versus prior year uh, for those top three revenues. Restricted is primarily com comprised of uh, federal and state grants and their sales tax. There was a, obviously a, a turnaround there, uh, and that was, that was the biggest growth area on the revenue side. This is the same type of illustration for the expenditures. Um, as you can see, the, the general government, human services, which would house the, the, the uh, social services and DSS um, expenditures and education. Um, are going to be the, the largest three, which is very typical of, of a county. And this is some more comparative data for those those primary three expenditure categories. In general government, um, this is we, the next two slides will be um, some comparative um, balance sheet and income statement items for your your enterprise fund um, cash relatively. Um, the same number, no, no major changes here. Um, unrestricted net assets, which is going to be net assets that aren't um, um, affected by capital assets or debt. Um, this is a full accrual term, so it's not the exact same as available fund balance, but if it were modified, it would be essentially the same thing. Um, debt service requirement, that, that's monies that, that have to be budgeted, set aside to, to service debt, obviously. Charges for service relatively. Um, flat from, from the prior year with the, just a little bit of marginal growth. Same thing for solid waste. Pretty consistent from, from year to year. No major changes, no major variances there either. And um, that's all the slides that I have, and I'm certainly open to the board or, uh, for questions. Didn't have a chance to look through this thoroughly, but did you have any findings? Sure yes, have. we have we have one finding. It was the same as, as in 2011, uh, and that's a it's a um, internal control finding because we assist in the drafting of the financial statements. And the wording of the finding says that it's a uh, it's a technical expertise not typically required for day to day operations. Um, so when we assist in those full accrual entries and in, in the actual writing of the financial statements by statute, it's a it's an automatic finding. So Brian, uh, what was the 
date of the run of the trial balance that reflects your numbers on the screen? The trial balance was of June 30th. No, but what day did you run the trial balance that you were doing that from? I know as of date, but what date, on what specific date did you run the trial balance? I'm not sure. Uh, it would have been prior to coming for field work. We came to field work the second week in August. The, the final one that was sent is probably a little bit off track on that because I can't even see. We received revenues and demands from March 3rd, September, and then yeah, entries well, having been made, and until we receive those final revenue numbers, we can't finalize that trial balance. So was that reflected in these numbers or not? Yes. That, those are final, final numbers, right? <clears throat> I was. Uh, the, the, the only difference between those numbers and the numbers that were physical at June 30th would have been any kind of accruals for revenues or expenditures. Right. Well, I, I was about, I tried messing with this last night, and I was about $20,000 out, and I was just trying to, want to make sure I was looking at the same thing you were. Um, obviously, uh, I think we had $338,000 worth of inc increase increased cash flow, the $268,000 of the available fund balance growth. 267. Yeah, 267, 268 right. range, I believe. And then the 174. Was the increase in general fund fund balance? That's right. right. Yeah, so I was looking at that. Um, 160 of that was in sales tax, so that's right. primarily the, right. the driver. Yeah, I saw those two numbers. When uh, on page 17, of the presentation of the report. On the report. Okay. okay. This is a reconciliation. Yeah, the three hundred sixty-nine thousand down there, and increasing, of course. Yes. And obviously, one of the things I'm concerned about is our unfunded liabilities. And could you? Um, explain that to me just a little bit so I have a better understanding what we're talking there. Right, and there's this this number will be included in the debt roll forward, which is in the notes. Basically what that is, <coughs> is, is Gates County's on a pay-as-you-go for other right. post-employment benefits, which is, is recommended by the, the Local Government Commission and, and, and most, the majority of, of, of counties, cities, municipalities that have other post-employment benefits are on under that same umbrella. Right. I understand that. So this, this is the, the current year expense, if you will, the increase in the liability. If you're not funding it and the, the liability increases by that much on a full accrual basis, there's no cash associated with this. It's right. essentially a full accrual expense. Um, so that's the increase. It started at X and it ended at Y, and the difference is that. So what percent of our liability do you think that we have funded? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. That's not. Um, there's no. There's no benchmark as far as if you. Let's see. Is this OPEB? Um, on page 43, you can see the the detail on the OPEB. There was contributions made of fifty-five thousand dollars in the current year. Um, and so that's what the that increase of that net increase of three sixty-eight one thirty-eight is the the actual cost minus what contributions were made. I would have to, uh, I can certainly, if you give me some contact information, I can certainly get back to you on that percentage that, that may be funded, but uh, that's, not, uh, that's not something that there's any kind of benchmark for. Right. Um, they just, like, if you're on page you go, you simply have to stay on top of, of the expenses that flow through. Okay, on page 18. <clears throat> Ad valorem taxes there, that's uh, property tax, uh, real estate tax, and... Motor vehicle. Motor vehicle. Correct. Okay. And um, this budget number we're comparing to, is that the adjusted budget? Or is we that have the original. original. If you're looking at Exhibit F, this is general fund budget actual. You have the, under the original column is the original budget that was adopted, and then the 6,342,723 is the, the final amended budget as of 630. So this doesn't have the $309,000 error reflected in there? So in other words, <clears throat> now is, are we saying this then, that this number is inflated by $300,000? So we're really not negative $300,000. Our budget's actual was because we never right. actually did a budget amendment. We just made sure that we tracked and recovered the funds knowing that that figure was inflated. But really, from 
If you really looked at it on the adjusted budget, we have paused at 300. Well, it would if the budget no. is is what it is. There wasn't a budget amendment. I, I right. That. If, if you would have done a budget amendment, then it would have been pretty flat because it's 300,000. The, the actual number compared to the final budget was $305,667 less. That's right. So it, so it would be relatively flat. It would be, okay. Yeah. Now that, that's the point that I wanted to get there. Um, on page 31. I'm trying to remember. All right, I, I think I'm going to look at it. 640 available fund. All right, on page 35. 35. Mm -hmm. okay. On the, uh, tell me a little bit about this now. What, what are uh, municipalities and government uh, activities? What, I know they're bound uh, to a certain extent in here. What kind of things can they do to enhance this obviously and I saw something about talking about in the pension fund five to seven percent return now where is that five and seven percent return coming from that as is where this is like I mean CDs and stuff is right that's very percent. unreal are you talking about the actuarial number used to yeah, carry the pension liability that's, that's we, 10 years ago correct that's not a that that's not a um it's not a very transparent number uh, no, where not. they get their numbers from, I'm, I'm not sure. That's the that's the actuary that does that. Uh, they come up with all these assumptions, projected growth, uh, inflation growth, um, interest rate of return, um, average age of workers, uh, where they, I mean, that's their profession. We just, and the LGC, uh, the county uses Kavanaugh and McDonald, which is an LGC recommended uh, firm, and, and we send them the required information. Uh, they send us back the, the, the numbers based on their assumptions. And where they get those numbers, if they could find 7% return, I would like to invest there. Uh, me too. That's what I was reading that, and it's extremely misleading uh, from that standpoint. But looking at this $1.9 million. Uh, and are you looking at the investments? Yeah. Okay. Yes. And trying when we only have, and obviously I've been focused on paying down debt, trying to get big returns for reducing interest rates and, and, and term limits, which obviously the rate of return on those uh, liabil future liabilities is extremely beneficial, comparatively speaking. Now, what can I do with this money that I'm allowed to do? Uh, and, and for instance, like, and I know you probably wouldn't be doing this, like dividend paying stocks, they wouldn't let you do that with where you could get a better rate of return than no. what you're actually doing here. Yeah, the you general can. snatches way. Yeah. yeah, I need to read that. You can only exactly pretty uh, for the most part at this point in time, North Carolina Capital Management Trust, which is very 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 low risk, is all that the public funds can be invested into. Is that kind of what you're asking? Yeah, uh, more or less. I haven't gone and read. I saw this and actually tried to right. research that and see what we could do. But obviously, this is a big thing that's really hurting a lot of uh, government. Well, especially with what's happening with the monetary policy that we got in the United States today with the low interest rates and everything. So just looking for other avenues to uh, enhance investments. Right, right. Um, I'm, uh, it's, uh, I'm still, um, obviously, I, I don't give guidance on, on <laughs> investing right. public dollars that. or how the board should, should go about spending. But um, as far as um, looking for return on dollars, with public funds, management trust is about your only option. Okay. Now that's that's really what I wanted to wanted to, to know. Well, that's about all I had chance to. Like I said, I tried to scan through that, but right. uh, that was uh, anyhow. Good job. It uh, looks good. I like the way it presented, and uh, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. What page is it finding? Is the compliance not included? The compliance was not included. No, I didn't see it. It, it, the final bound, we just submitted to the LGC. Uh, we haven't got those final bound copies printed. They should be here within the next week. Uh, basically, what it says is that um, per general statute, um, it's required that um, you have someone of technical expertise to draft fully gap, fully dis full disclosure financial statements. Um, and if we help assist in that at all, by inherently in nature, we have to issue that finding. It doesn't. 
It has zero to do with, with staff's technical expertise and day-to-day -day operations. Simply one time a year, can they draft financial statements? Um, it's, it's standard. Um, every client that I work on basically gets that fine. That's the same repeat finder from last year. Correct. That's the only one. When we started four years ago, I think there was four or five. Uh, this is our fourth year on the engagement, and everything that we've communicated has been rectified in a very timely manner. And, and um, that you know, assuming that that the, the board doesn't, uh, um, you know, I have there's some places that go out and spend X number of dollars to, to avoid that, but but it's really it's almost beneficial to the auditor because you get a hands-on approach to the financial statements by drafting. Um, you see each number in, in more detail. You actually physically touch every number. Um, so I mean. Uh, that one is, is something that I would expect going forward, but like I said, the, the other ones have all been corrected in a timely manner and, and, and um, aggressively um, um, dealt with. So. Do you have a, a card, uh, Brian, with your email address on it so I can? I can give it to you. I do have a card. It's in, it's in uh, Sandy's office, though. Um, the 28% uh, the uh, fund balance that you were talking about, um, mm -hmm. and you mentioned the fact that we were in line with our other counties and the recommendations of LGC. Can you touch on that a little bit? Uh, it's, it's been, you know, been been said that we're we're running too much fund balance and we shouldn't have that much fund balance. But generally, most counties. I mean, I've had several county managers well, tell me the same thing that we're in a very good place right. and where we should be with the, the LGC's um, recommendations. They set recommendations based on geographic location, based on population, based on um, risk. Uh, inherent risk with with natural disasters and, and and all kinds of stuff that goes into their their peer groups um, I think Gates County is plus or minus two points within inside its peer group uh, for counties of its size demographic uh, geographic location they, uh, you know all their criteria that they use um, obviously I mean you know not exactly right on the coast but they're um, you're close enough to the coast where I guess they assume that, that hurricanes are, are a possibility and flooding obviously we experienced that in the past um, so if, if those things do happen they say that this is the, the amount of fund balance that should be readily spendable in, in those situations so <clears throat> say are you saying that's in conflict with the eight percent that the state guidelines are the state percent says eight is the minimum across the board for everybody with no assumptions based on um, location um, so um, you know the town the city of Asheville or, or um, you know town of Franklin or Gates County or um, Raleigh or Charlotte, they're saying across the board based on no individual criteria, 8% is as low as you can go. If you legally go below 8%, they have the authority to come in and manage your finances. So is the LGC implementing this upon, uh, contra to state policy? What do you mean? Yeah, 8% is. So they got two? Th this is just, um, it, there's no, there's no authoritative language that says you have to be a certain it's just it's just good practices I understand it's a, re it's a recommended percentage yeah it, it, if you fall below 20 percent no one's going to send you a letter and say this is bad it's just if you want somewhere to compare yourself and see where you're at compared to peer groups that's all it is no uh, that's also reflected on where you could project your uh, cash flow over the next five or six years depending on what your uh, so-called uh, outstanding liabilities would be also using your available fund balance to project cash Well, flow. not necessarily that, but I'm talking about reducing your debt where your uh, li interest liabilities have declined, which is not on the balance sheet, but is a liability. Interest payable? Yes. That's what you're asking about? Um, it's uh, which, which it's on exhibit which A. Which increases yeah. your cash flow over time. If you reduce interest expense, it does increase cash That's flow, right. correct. Um, so, I mean, there's several ways to look at that. I mean. Obviously, uh, you had to look at the charts, the graphs of where you're proceeding to and where you want to go. Uh, if you look in our last, uh, in the last six, seven years, we have, have uh, grown fund balance over by, over by 60 percent. Matter of fact, we've almost doubled it from 1.6 million to 3.1 million. Okay. So, you know, so it depends on how you look at it and where you're going to. Was 1.6 bad? I don't think so. So 3.1 a day is great, but what do you do with it? Do you use it to um, enhance your return on what you on your cash, so that you reduce your uh, going forward expenditures, which increases cash flow? Would you agree? 
I agree that that uh, you have less interest payable that you will have more cash. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but um, you know, it's not my job to, to, to assess. And I don't mean to put you on the spot. Fund balance percentage or 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 spending practices or paying down that's debt. Right. That's right. I understand. I just report the numbers. But I know, but you understand what I'm talking right. about. And that's right. That's the good point. All right. Mr. Chairman. Did, um, I'd just like to make a comment for the rest of you guys. I'm sitting here doing a little bit of math, and I see that the uh, sales tax item on page eight uh, went from 1.7 uh, million in 2011 to 1.871. Right, it was like 160 thousand dollars. Yeah, right. that's no, pretty me. substantial. And uh, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, where did that actually, let where did that actually take place? But uh, but, that, but that's good. And I think some of this, and based on what I've got with Jeff, the, uh, if you go look at the food stamp allocations to Gates County, in 1992, we were spending $68,000 in Gates County. In 2011, we spent $2,971,000. So, and that is being captured in our, some of it is in our county, about $800,000. So if you take the $800,000 and put your sales tax ratio, which is against that, then you have some increase in that kind of stuff. So you're looking from year to year changes of, of money that's being recaptured in the county of Gates. Now we want to, obviously uh, that meant $2.1 million went out of Gates County to other localities that earned that sales tax. Some of it, uh, you know, wherever you can use this on. And that's, the things that we need to try to capture here that increases that as well as uh, it's also a selling point to sell upon a grocery store or people in this that hey this is revenue that you can capture here in Gates County that you're not that's not being captured now so that's important and uh, that's a good point what you're saying there, John. any other questions that's all I have mr. chairman well basically you're saying our county is very healthy now yes if that's the board's policy, then yes. <laughs> board policy is to have a healthy county, <laughs> and that's what I want to want to leave right, that's leave that's office knowing that we will leave. I'm leaving the county healthy, like I found it. Uh, as far as you know, if, if your county policy was to have 50 percent available fund balance, if that's yeah. what you're, I understand on, that has to do with politics. Right. So that, that if you're 50 uh, and you're 28, that's not good. I, but I, think, it, I think he's asking not in a policy standpoint, in a general financial health from standpoint. From a financial health financial technical expertise and, and management, I think you're in very good shape. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. I think before we move on, I think this is a, an opportunity we should thank the finance department for another good job. Thank you, Sandy. We appreciate yeah. the job you and your uh, staff do. You and Marie, uh, your staff <laughs> and department heads, they do a very good job at budgeting. We've done a very good job at maintaining expenses. Uh, and keeping our budget safe and secure, keeping our county so it don't turn into Chowan County. Sorry, Travis, if that bothered you, I saw you jump when I said that, but everybody was here four years ago knows what I'm talking about. All right, uh, next on the agenda. Uh, we're going to go into citizens' comments now. Uh, do we have a list up there? Uh, Thomas Hill, you're first on the list. Hello, Thomas. Ah, thank you. I want to appreciate, I want to tell you how much I appreciate the campaigning that you did. Um, I want you to know that in front of these people, I'm going to tell them about a conversation that you and I had after some time after the primary. We made an agreement that neither one of us would attack each other's family, that we would stay on the issues, 
and it would be mano to mano. And as a man, you have uh, held your end of the bargain, and I think I've held my end of the bargain as well, hammering you at almost every issue, uh, even throwing the kitchen sink. <laughs> and in four years from now, I may throw a tub. <laughs> but uh, with that said, uh, I do want you to know that I appreciate you staying above board. Um, my supporters uh, were well told to stay above board. Um, and I just wanted to come to you today in front of these people to let you know man to man that uh, I appreciate you keeping your promise. And uh, I look forward to working with you on the courthouse committee. Uh, I look forward to healing the county, uh, coming together with bipartisan effort. And uh, in front of the cameras, I would like to say to the Republican supporters, job well done. Um, I thank you for all for your support. And uh, now it's time to get behind Henry Jordan to make sure that the county is healed and uh, to come together with a bipartisan effort with the courthouse and with the other issues dealing with Gates County. Um, however, I will say this for the Democrats that's coming up for election. I promise you, I will be there. Uh, and specifically to Annie Mobley, who has a re-election coming up in two years. I personally will be a part of that election. And uh, I have questions that the American people of Gates County and the surrounding counties of North Carolina want answers to. Y'all have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. And I'd like to thank you for <clears throat> your uh, effort in become, trying to become a county commissioner and the, 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 the fact that you were interested enough. There's a lot of people in Gates County that aren't interested and sit around and complain, but you did show an interest, and I appreciate that a lot. I didn't agree with a lot of things you said, but I did appreciate your interest in the county. Sure, sure. And we, at the end of the day, we could agree to disagree. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Y'all have a good day. All right. Exactly. All right. Next on the agenda, uh, Mr. Sidney Pierce. <clears throat> Hello, Sydney. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, I just want to be brief and everything, and uh, what I want to like to talk about is uh, I'd like to congratulate Ms. Uh, Linda Hoffler on her uh, victory, um, won by 68% and everything. It was a hard-fought campaign, but we did keep it civil between the two of us, and I'd like to thank her for that. And like, like Thomas said, we look forward to working with both her and Henry Jordan on the, um, the Courthouse Renovation Committee, and uh, we need to thank you all for that. Thank you. Thank you, Sid. And the same for you. I do appreciate your interest you showed. You helped the county before you decided to run to, to work on trying to get our uh, Sunbury School uh, disposition done. You did an excellent job with that. You did an excellent job working with the old courthouse as an intern. And we do appreciate the time spent and the, and the effort that you put here in Gates County. A young man like you can, can go a long ways with a lot of strength. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That. Uh, next on the agenda, Ms. Marie Allen. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Marie. Good morning. I wanted to um, present something to Toby on behalf of the Gates County Chamber of Commerce. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you lost it. <laughs> yeah, you almost lost it. <laughs> Um, and we have some chamber board members here, Jack Owens, Vernon Brinkley, Jonathan. There's no other board members, right? Okay. Would you like Reba. to have them? I'm sorry, Reba. Would you like to have them come up with you at this point and take a picture or something? No. <laughs> okay. Well, if they would like to, sure. Um, we started the Chamber of Commerce a little over three years ago, and Toby has been on board with us since that time. He also was our treasurer this year, and we are really sad that he's moving on, but congratulations on moving on. And we just have a little um, certificate here, if you would come up. Sure. It's, the, it's the Joke Good Citizen <laughs> Award, presented to Toby Chapel for superior service to Gates County Chamber of Commerce from 2009 to 2012. We have a gift card for you. <laughs> thank you. Marie, I'd like to thank you for being strong in the uh, Chamber of Commerce. We tried to start one eight to ten years ago, and it kept failing and failing and failing. We finally found enough people that were strong enough to keep it rolling and keep it moving. 
and you've been a good, strong part of that. You and Jack, Vernon, uh, Vernon and I, we've, we've met at a lot of meetings before, before we could get enough people together that wanted to continue the process, and it finally got continued. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Marie. All right. Uh, well, Travis, it looks like you're next. Travis. <laughs> Last time I, I met with him, it was at COA a few weeks ago. <laughs> I think this might be a good time for me to go back to my office. And you can stay right here there. <laughs> Is this a budget chapel? amendment you got coming up? <laughs> you wish it was a budget Finally amendment. get my chance. <laughs> First of all, good morning, everyone. Now, I'm Travis Burke, District Extension Director with Cooperative Extension, and uh, I just, I too want to say on behalf of uh, NC State University Cooperative Extension, Reba and Gates Extension staff, I wanted to wish Toby well. I will not be able to participate Friday as they uh, send you, uh, give you good uh, well wishes uh, in your new, uh, I guess, uh, opportunity in South Carolina. And I just want to say I appreciate the opportunity. I wanted you also to know that I can, too, come here without making a request for something. I know you were probably wondering why you're here, but I can do that. I wanted you to experience that before you left. It's a so. <laughs> it took four years to get here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So, again, I really uh, do appreciate your uh, effort here, and I and, uh, wish you well uh, as you move on and looking forward to working with Mr. Winley. Congratulations. Thank you, Travis. I appreciate it. Okay. That's the last. Uh, at this point in time, I would like to uh, introduce our new uh, interim county manager, uh, Mr. Ken Wintley. He was selected for us to, uh, to work to lead Gates County until we can find a full-time manager. Uh, Mr. Ken, he's from uh, Robeson County. Uh, Y'all read the paper. Uh, he's a very intelligent man and been in the county management work for a long time. <laughs> So uh, we, we look forward to working with you, with Ken, and thank you for deciding to come. All right, uh, next on the agenda with the department reports. Uh, Sandy, uh, the finance officer, you got something you need to do? Since I'm not as tall as Brian, I think I'll bring that down a little bit. Um, I have some budget amendments. There should have been an additional one left in your folder this morning. Mm -hmm. Reba was notified of a grant late last week, so we had to add that in last minute. What, what number would that be? 20? 23, I believe. 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23, is that right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most of these are pretty straightforward. <coughs> Are y'all ready? Um, number 19 is a refund of the revenue. Some of the grant revenue received for the Genesis grant was not expended last year, and we need to send that back to the state. So that is the budget amendment for that. I've been informed that that will not happen next year. You did, you, you're sending money back? Okay. <laughs> Didn't go over well. <laughs> Tears come to your eyes, I'm Joel. There's a doubt about that. <laughs> Probably and then some. Okay. Uh, number 20, the SHIP grant also through REBA. This is to rec correct the estimated budget. Um, we're going to receive an additional $800 in revenue over what we had originally estimated, and there's an additional $353 that will carry forward from last year, and this is the budget to incorporate that into that. Um, the biggest change on this is to allow a contracted employee to come in and cover for an employee that's going to be out for an extended <coughs> period of time. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. So there's a big chunk being moved into that contracted services, and that's what that's for. Number 21, also Reba. This is a new grant that Reba has received, and I'm going to let her speak to you about that. I believe you all approved this a couple months ago. Uh. 
we're so trying we're trying to get some paperwork clarified. This is the leadership grant that they've approved, but if you'll speak to them, remind them what it is. Identify yourself where you live. <laughs> <laughs> we want a profile both ways. <laughs> Give me a picture. Reba, Reba Green Holly, Cooperative Extension Director. Several years of service, blood type, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to smile in a mug shot. <laughs> okay. Uh, the North Carolina Rural Center had several grants available that counties could apply for under their new generation uh, initiative, and we applied for the new generation leadership grant. Um, and this grant came out of their research done that showed our rural counties were losing their young population, and part of the issue was they were moving on if they left for college, what have you, because of jobs, et cetera. Also, the new, the young people in the county that chose to come back or stay were really not becoming engaged in the civic process. So um, the grant allows for us to get a group of young people aged 16 to about 25 that we're using to look at Gates County, learn about its uh, history, and then look at what issues are and come up with a project that they want to design and implement for the county that would attract young people to it but also be a benefit to the county. So uh, we, the maximum was $20,000 that you could get for the grant with the majority of it going toward the project. So 15,000 will be going toward the project and they're going to be looking at um, where we are in Gates County with various things, the growing Gates uh, proposal that we did a couple years ago, looking at ecotourism that will be presented to them to look at the findings from that, and they will then go from there coming up with their project. And this has to be done by June 30th. Thank you. So the selection process of the students, uh, would it be based on any of the classes taken at the high school? Or um, we uh, have as collaborators the school system, chamber, uh, extension, and we've been working with Dr. Williams, who has a leadership team. So they have been invited to participate, and any others that Adrian Bradley, his contact, has uh, recommended to be on that. We have some 4-H'ers. We've put the word out publicly for any youth in those age categories that want to participate. So we've had some at-large come forward. And we want to work with about 25, so we still have slots. If you know of any other young people who would like to be a part of this process, we've met once with the NC Rural people, and we start again next week, I believe. Uh, and we'll be meeting monthly until they get their project done. One other question. Uh, I noticed in the amendment that there is no provision for, for salary. I recognize this is just $20,000, but uh, none of that is appropriated for salary. Are we just uh, assuming that salary responsibility within your current budget? Yes, or? it's between me and the 4-H agent with me giving more leadership. Did you have to do an in-kind? In-kind. Right. I have to so record it so under in-kind. So the salary right. towards the in-kind. Right. Okay. Anything else, John? Um, I have an idea. <laughs> I'll share it with you later. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay thank Bye. you, Reba. Okay. Amendment number twenty-two. Uh, this is actually a grant that Lulu has received to put a disc golf course at the community center around the walking trail. I believe you all were a part of this as well, but this is the budget amendment for those funds. We have received the funds, and Lulu tells me that once she gets through soccer season, she'll be proceeding along with that process to, mm. to get it put in place. And is that it for budget amendments? No, number 23, 23 is the one that was left in your folder. Oh, okay. This is the other new grant for Reba. Sorry, I should have just kept you up here. This is the Envision grant. Um, you just stayed up here if you want to. <laughs> well, I do have another one coming, but I haven't found, got the paperwork yet, so that'll be in December, hopefully. Um, 
the envision grant is a program that we ran for the first time last year with our high school students teaching them employability skills and it was funded by the east carolina behavior health and so this year we applied for funds and we were able to get them again and um, it's pretty much we'll be doing the same thing it'll be at large any child that wants to sign up for it we hold the program at the school and we meet once a week after school teaching them employability skills getting people of various careers in to talk to them job shadowing and we worked with jonathan and the chamber last year for job shadowing placements and hopefully we want to get them on a college tour Does she? We all allergic to me. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all the amendments that I have. have okay, gentlemen, we've got uh, five, what, five amendments? Five amendments before us. Do we have a, a motion to approve the amendments as presented? I make a motion we approve the budget amendments as presented today. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Uh, all opposed like so. Thank you, Ms. Sandy, on that. I actually that? Have, yep. have one more issue. Uh, cool. There was a travel policy included in your FYI, part of your packet, but it does require board action. Uh, so if we can go ahead and do new? that. Um, we've made some, some really pretty minor changes to it, and I've summarized them. Um, but just wanted to see if y'all have any questions and get the board's approval for this. I recall, I haven't <coughs> got it yet, but I recall that the major change was instead of paying actual uh, meal cost and, and so forth, you would give a per diem, you would give a stated amount. Yes, sir. Uh, I guess the question that comes to mind is that wouldn't we want to consider that regional? You know, if I'm going to Washington, D.C. versus, uh, let's say, Asheville, uh, Washington DC I don't know if I can get a meal for eight dollars well honestly I've been here for five years and I've had two Washington DC trips all the other travel that we have is in state and this is these rates are based on the state rates on the uh, state travel policy I don't know if you want to put a provision in here for out-of-state travel um, but it's very very rare that that happens well we well, as a matter of fact you know when the <laughs> OLF situation was up yes. I think I made uh, I know I made one. I've made, made two trips to Washington, D.C. Yes. They were the two Those are the only two I know about. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, that's too tough. Those are the only ones I've ever seen. That's why it was not addressed in this policy, honestly. Okay. Well, I know we may want. Yeah, here it is. I made two, and then even turn in a slip, I don't want. We may want to just have some caveat in there that, you know, these are North Carolina per diem rates. And are they, federal, are they based on the federal per diem? Yeah, the IRS sets a maximum, and then the state sets their rates every other year. And as long as you fall under the federal maximum, you're okay. If you go over that, then you have to deal with taxability issues. What do you recommend? I recommend we leave it as it is, and if you want to put a statement in there that somewhere that says, and, and I'll let Toby speak to this, something that says, you know, for out-of-state travel or, you know, areas that may be higher, it can be approved it separately. Yeah, uh, I, think you could, I think you could just do, give your manager maybe some authority or some latitude for special situations like the one you're having, but have the general policy set as this. Well, if you went other than that, you could, you'd have to probably go with uh, receipts or something like that, wouldn't you? And just yeah. Whatever you spent well, there, you bring all, in receipts. All you're referring to so far is per diem on the meal. Is that correct? Right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm, are we not going to, I mean, the biggest issue is going to be the per diem for um, where you're going to stay. The, there's not a per diem for where you no, stay. You pay actual cost. Just on okay. the Just on meals. The only thing I saw was looking at the times number and I was kind of taken aback by that a little bit and I think there needs to be some discretionary thing there on, on really with the manager making some discretionary whether you present a receipt if it falls within those time limits or not and I'm all in agreement with a per diem that's fine but uh, they are special circumstances that may be 
outside the boundaries of what we're comfortable laying out with that. Correct. And, and, and we need some leeway that the manager has the opportunity. I mean, it, when it says uh, leave at four and get back by eight, well, you know, does that mean I need to eat before I leave or what, you know? Yeah, pretty much, and that's what that's for. I mean, it, you know, if, if you don't leave the house until 8 o'clock in yeah. the morning, obviously you have the opportunity to eat breakfast in the morning. That's right. Um, so. You know, if you're leaving at 6 o'clock in the morning, the chances of you wanting to eat a sandwich before you leave or not. And, yeah. and we've set it up that way um, really to kind of limit the liability as well, and, and we left that part the same. That's that good. is unchanged. <laughs> right. So it's really not a true per diem. It's more of a per meal, but... I, I think if you'll turn to page two, the third paragraph, it has it already has the sentence in that that we're talking about. Page so two, yeah, page two, third paragraph. This policy excludes and, excludes and does not apply to employees who receive travel allowances who are granted exemptions per, per prior approval by the county manager or board commissioners. Mm -hmm. and so you already have actually. the latitude built in to make exceptions. Mm -hmm. so that's that's good. good. And and those situations are rare and can certainly be addressed as needed. Do you need a motion? Um, yeah, we need a motion to approve this policy as presented. So moved. Do I have a second? second. On a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed like sign. Okay, I would like some clarification on a couple of things. Number one, the effective date, I assume, is immediately Thank today. You. Okay. The other thing is we have several other travel, and honestly, this probably really only affects the meals to be paid if there's no overnight stay. Um, we have several that are approved. I'd like to grandfather in anybody that's already received pre-approval for that travel, if it's okay with you all. I'll make a motion. We uh, no, we'll make a motion. All, uh, yeah, all receipts that are pending. Okay, we got a motion to approve all travel pending and approved uh, based on, uh, the, based based on, on the based on the prior policy. policy. Okay. Yes. Correct. Was the point? Oh, we've got a motion. I have a second. Second. All in favor, say aye. Uh, All those like sign. Did I give you what you need now? That's it. Thank y'all very much. Thank you, Sandy. Okay, the next one on our agenda, Ms. Renee McGinnis. And Ms. Gwen Harrell. I see her coming too. Oh, I love it. Good morning. How are y'all this morning? <laughs> You have your collector's report for the month of October. Nothing out of the ordinary to report with that unless y'all have any questions. Wait till later, Johnny. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm going to do that this okay. month and next month. Okay. Okay. I want to get through our real estate issues before. If there are no questions with that, um, one thing I will let you know is we have had four complaints filed with the clerk's office at this point through Zacchaeus Legal Services, and so we are moving forward with them. So hopefully that will get some of our delinquent taxes in. Not being uh, it I guess it depends on who you who you are. For who, us, on for this us, side of the for table, for us it's not negative. Okay. For the taxpayer, it's, it it would be a negative. And this is the so. preliminary for the foreclosure. Yes. Okay. Yes. Any questions with that? Okay. If not, in your packet this month, you did have two bids for two pieces of property that we do hold. And I believe you also were given an upset bid in your folder. Not really an upset bid since you hadn't accepted the first one yet. 0388, right? That's the bid. You've got the bid and upset bid. Let me get mine together. Parcel number yes. 0388. Mm -hmm. is the parcel number that you have two oh, bids sorry, on. 0388. Has everybody got that? Mm -hmm. You had a bit of 250 and an upset bit of 350. Yes. All right, so we have an upset bid for the. the uh, I have handed you a map of the location of the property. It's off of Lassiter Lane. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a racetrack, though. Which is off of Kellogg Port Road in the Sunbury area. The 
second bid that you have is the one that you need to consider, and that this is a bid that has come in from an adjoining landowner, and that bid is in the amount of three hundred and fifty dollars. What was them lots? One acre wide and ten acres long. What it was was a family division of land that was very poorly divided. I can see that. <laughs> well, a racetrack. Yeah, it appears that it's not highly marketable. No. It's, it's, it really doesn't have a right of way to it. It's kind of landlocked, right? But yeah. Amongst other property. Right. Exactly. And the the upset bid, uh, Miss uh, Miss Boone, is that? One she is the adjoining landowner. She front or owns, back? She owns the two lots in front. Okay. Has she built on her lots? Yes. She has. All right. The other uh, bid that we had, the two hundred fifty dollar bid, is that right? Okay. You don't need to consider that one. Okay. Just That's upset. That that was just the first one that came in, and we've had another since for three fifty. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's not this is not really no, upset. No, I, I need to know if you want to accept the three hundred and fifty dollar bid. And then it'll go in process for upset. Then you get the ten okay. days for upset, right? Yes. All right, gentlemen. You got any questions or any suggestions? Mr. Chairman, I'm prepared to make a motion, and I will make a motion that we accept this bid uh, as we said before. Uh, this property is not highly marketable. Uh, it's a shame that we have to take a loss on it, but you know, as a county, we're not uh, in the business of holding real estate, and uh, I'm not sure if we could do a lot better if we tried to sell it. So I, I would make the bid, motion that we accept the $350 uh, bid <coughs> uh, by the uh, adjacent landlord. We've got a motion to accept the $350 bid for this piece of property, 05-00388. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. Abstain. We've got one abstention, but that's a, a positive vote. If you had the other property beside it, on one of them, you'd make a nice runway, wouldn't you? <laughs> okay, we'll we'll move forward with that one. Okay. The second one that you have, which the parcel number on that is zero one zero zero five four two. That is a 50 by 60 foot lot that is located on Highway 158 west of Eleanor's Crossroads. And is this the upset bid we're talking about? No, no, no this is an original um, initial bid for the property. I don't think I, we have a company. We, we had a gentleman to put in a bid for all three properties that we had listed on the website. Is is this the one that we've tried to sell for several years? No, I don't think it is. This is one that the county obtained back in 2007. Right. So we've, we've been trying to sell this yes. for several years. Okay. So we'll make sure it's the same one. Is this, uh, oh, this is Cleveland, Tennessee. I'm sure he don't live next door then, does he? <laughs> the properties that are next door to this are in a situation okay. pretty much like the uh, one you're looking at. I, I don't. Maybe I'm, I'm lost in my paperwork. But I don't. We're saying this is the Terry Butler. Yes. Um, he had two bids. He had this two. Bids. He had two yeah. You oh, had okay. two well, I, bids from him. This is the uh, property number. Five, Should be five four two. Okay. Yeah. I don't have that one. Maybe it's in. It was in that folder. Okay. Right there. All right. Somewhere. Somewhere in here. <laughs> Parcel number is the only thing different. Yeah. Come take that. There you go. All right. Uh, any questions on this piece of property, gentlemen? It's big enough for a sign. Is it? Um, it's on. It's on the road. Roadside. Yes, there is road frontage. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. No, we we. There was one that we took a bid on last okay, month. Okay, you get to that one. Okay, we're working on it. Oh, uh, we've got a bid on that piece of property. Um, okay, this is uh, just west of Eleanor's Crossroads. 
Right. The, the property you talked about, the on piece the behind it, is that also in a problem too? That is not, no. Okay. Not the no, farm that's behind it. Okay. okay. Uh, would that, was so that owner are, interested in this? Or we all are. They have received letters from us and we never received okay. anything. I'll make a nice road to his place back now. <laughs> that's true. That's 300 square feet. So. That's all it's good for, was a, a road back to the other property. All right. Uh, you got any big uh, trees on it? <laughs> only, I, I don't. Th <laughs> don't have any trees on it at all. I don't <laughs> think. <Big tree>. <laughs> <laughs> they might be worth a little more than the bid that's proposed. I'm not sure. How much it's going to cost to get somebody to cut those 10 trees? <laughs> we, we haven't cruised the timber on it. Mm -hmm. All right, gentlemen, you got a, a bid of $250 for this property 01-00542. Seems with a bid deposit of twelve dollars and fifty cents. Uh, do I have a motion to accept this bid? This will start the upset process now, right? Okay. So move. Second. This motion is upset, second. Right. Uh huh. This will be the upset. No, no this no. this it will start this the upset process. This is the initial process. bid. Okay. This is the initial bid. Second that then. Okay, we got a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. All right, Mr. Renee, we've sold that property. <laughs> started Actually, it anyway. Started I, the process. I what think this got? will, these two will take care of the properties that the county has ended up with that really were not marketable properties. The other one that you had accepted a bid on, the bid that you had accepted was $300. We did have an upset bid of $400. So we did do a little better on that and that one has finalized and has gone to the attorney's office. Okay. Any questions with any? I have one question. Yes. Um, so the public can be aware the best place for them to go when when you brought these things before us, if they're interested in upsetting uh, a bid, mm -hmm. what would you recommend be their uh, course of action? The information is on our is on the county website, okay. and any other beyond that, they can certainly call our office or come into our office for any information they need. Okay, uh, I think I think some of our local people, this this purchaser here is from the state of Tennessee. He has local ties, yeah, so I, we have recently yeah. found out. Right, I'm familiar <laughs> I with, don't. with the ties, but this gentleman is his address is the state of yeah. Tennessee. Yes, and uh, and maybe I hope some folks looking at our video will go and just check these these things out, and some of them might be worthwhile. Some may and not. and also with our foreclosures and working with Zacchaeus Legal Service, anything that goes through the foreclosure process with them will also be on their website as well. So, so they cannot just go to the clerk of court's office and just identify the parcel? They can also go to the clerk of court's office to get information because it is posted with them and we post hours there as well. What I was trying to establish, Renee, is the research has been done for them. Oh, yes. The research has been done for yep. them. Go All the they website, have to do is ask for it. Check it out. It. If you're interested, come uh, make an upset bid. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No. Okay, if not, Is there anything else to sell? No, I, I think we've done about all we can do right now, but Miss Harold does have a refund. <coughs> That's I'm enough to buy a piece of property. <laughs> about 30 feet by 30 feet. Good morning. Hello, Gwen. How are you today? Doing well. You'll find your refund behind the tax report. said the amount of $400. So the $400 we're going to receive for one of those properties, we want to give it back to someone else. Um, <laughs> as you'll see on this refund, um, reason for refund, that was a tax that was paid by one of the um, mortgage companies. And the taxpayer had been in the office and made a partial payment prior to this, we receiving this payment. So we're asking to send a refund back for that amount that the taxpayer paid. Send it back to the mortgage company. Any questions, gentlemen? Just be 
JC Tax <coughs> Services Corporation. That is the mortgage company. Yes, sir. All right, we have a motion to uh, approve this uh, request for refund. So moved. Second. Motion is second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. All right, thank you. Thank you, you Gwen. Thank have you. a good day. Okay. Next on here is uh, Ms. Morgan Jethro, a planning director. Hello, Morgan. How are you, y'all? Good morning. Good morning. Um, what you have before you is the program manual resolution for our CDBG project. Um, instead of doing things piecemeal, where it seemed like every month I was bringing back to you this new plan that had to be adopted per uh, HUD guidelines, Wooten Company has rolled it all into one so we can just, instead of doing it piecemeal, do it in one go. These are all federal documents, things like fair housing plan, uh, re relocation requirements, citizen petition plan, citizen participation plan, sorry, et cetera. So I just need you all to approve this so we can move forward with CDBG. Gentlemen, you have any questions about this uh, Gates County Community Development Program? Uh, are there particular parts of it that we formulated ourselves? These are all standard documents, sir. Standardized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we would have to approve each one on an individual basis, uh, is what you're saying, no more. Yes, sir. Um, in the past, when we had Ms. Morris, we were doing it, it seemed like every couple of months. Wooten has put it all in one, so we don't have to keep coming back every couple of months with a new plan that has to be approved. Morgan, in prior CDBG cycles, mm -hmm. they've already approved these same documents. Yes. Okay. Yes. This is this just, just a new for batch. this cycle. Yes, sir. Just a new batch. Okay. Have the citizens uh, for this cycle been selected? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The we have three that are going to be be given brand new homes and one that's going to be repaired. And they have been identified. When does the new cycle begin? It already began. You will probably not see construction until probably maybe the, mm, I would say probably the spring or maybe the summer of this coming year. I mean, does it run from July 1 to, Ju to June 30th or um, calendar year? It's every three years and it begins January 1 and then goes to January 1. So, okay. so it's a three year program. Mm -hmm, three year it's a three year program. and a three year cycle. Right. Obviously, they've been notified, the, mm -hmm. the recipients. Yes. Uh, Will there be any posting on the website as to these are the recipients of the CDBG cycle, 2012 uh, cycle uh, uh, home replacement? It's not required, but if you would like it done, that would that's not a problem. I just wasn't sure for privacy reasons if anybody would or would not want that displayed on the website that they're getting a new home. Is that a, is it public documents or mm -hmm. public information? All public documents. Well, we periodically get calls and. And uh, sometimes we're not aware of, of who and what's been done. Mm -hmm. uh, you may want to look into it. I don't, you know, if it's if it's a privacy issue, certainly we don't want to do it. But I, I think we need to take a look at it, and we need to have something identified on the CDB, have a CDBG uh, site or, or a CDB listing uh, that kind of lets us know where we are. They're all, they're all public documents. The housing committee made the selection. Of course, that's a public meeting. Um, if you wanted something put on the website, we could certainly do that. Um, privacy, I can check out, check that in, into that if you'd like. All right, we have this uh, program manual resolution presented to us. Uh, do I have a motion that we approve the uh, program manual resolution as presented? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed like so. Thank you, y'all. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you, Morgan. Mm. Okay. All right. Next thing we're going into new business, unless anybody wants to take a break. <coughs> I, I want to challenge you, uh, commissioners, today to <laughs> we, got make, a new clock up. we got a new clock up there. And I hope you guys are watching it. Okay. We've got a Interim county manager here, if we could show him <laughs> that we can actually know, get through a, a meeting great on time. brief meeting, <laughs> staying on topic looks like that would be great. He asked me yesterday how long I thought it would take. I said it's hard to tell. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to sit right here and move along. All right. Next on the agenda, we've got the new business. The first thing on there is a request 
um, that I was received from uh, the uh, ABC board. Uh, they uh, are get preparing to start the process of building a new building in the uh, the Tar Heel area for the ABC store that's being uh, been purchased by the uh, state for the new road project. Uh, they were informed of the meter fees increasing in 1st of July, if I was in July, whenever we increased the meter yes. fees. So they went ahead and purchased the meter for that um, project. project. Uh, and they have requested to, uh, for the Board of Commissioners to refund that amount, uh, being as they've already had a meter there at the old store. And uh, uh, I talked to Timmy. He, I think he could go with it either way. Uh, I think it's probably a good idea. Uh, being that the, with the revenue that the county receives, and they're in a tight for money for that process of building a new store, and the county does receive a par portion of the sales so that of these from the stores, and I would recommend that we would ref refund the amount. I don't know how much it was. Do you know? Seven hundred fifty. Seven hundred fifty dollars uh, that they paid in advance to place the meter there at the new the new pro the new um, site that they plan on building on. So they've made their payment. Yeah, they've already they already purchased. They had already made a deal for the property and purchased the uh, the uh, meter before the uh, the fee increased to a thousand dollars that we had put in place, uh, and the uh, impact fee, I believe. And they were hoping that we would, re being they already had a meter and they weren't actually uh, on. They were, lo were losing the meter at the building they were having, and they weren't really adding no more customers. It's going to be the same customer. They would ask to be refunded at uh, seven hundred fifty dollars, and I told them I would bring it to the board. Do we have uh, an estimation of the approximate actual cost of meter installation as far as the labor? Um, Tim is not work? here. I don't really know. No, but I would say he, he sets the fee relative to what it costs. I don't think he's using this as a huge money-making endeavor, so I would say the fee is relatively close to the cost. So the cost is only the materials, though, because the labor is county employees, right? Right. The, uh, the Only the cost of materials. No. Well, you still have the cost for employees. It's just a sunk cost. But it's a fixed cost. Yeah. Right, which factors into the 750 I th If I remember, I think Timmy told me the meter actually cost. 350 something in that neighborhood I'd, I'd, I, I I'd hate to know. guess I don't really know I, I asked the question but I don't know what he told me but I told the board of ABC board that I would bring it to the commissioners and ask for and recommend the refund of the uh, meter fee okay and I will make that as a motion if second. Uh, all right we've got a motion in a second Do I, all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. all opposed like sign Okay. Uh, let's see. The next thing on here, we have a, a revised record retention and disposition schedule for the Register of Deeds Office. Let's see if I can find that. This was uh, this a new uh, revised schedule. Y'all got it in your packet. Um, that's re required. Uh, and the approval needs to be done by the, uh, the Board of Commissioners. I don't have Sharon in here to answer any questions about it. Yeah, it would be interesting to know when your administrative value ends and how they're <laughs> going to measure that. Yeah, it would be. Uh, okay. Do you want us to go get Sharon? I'll get Sharon if y'all want to ask her a question. I, mean, I don't have a problem with it. Does she right around the corner here. Does she need to have it approved by a certain date? Uh, that would be another question she'd need to be here to uh, answer. Do you want to table it? We're going to table it until uh, Maybe we'll just go get her right yeah, quick. Yeah, let's table it. Let's just go Jonathan get her. Jonathan said he'd run and get her right quick. We'll, we'll just hold on until she, she, till she gets in here. We can ask her questions. All right, the next thing, let's see. The reappointment of to the Human Relations Committee. The following members of the Human Relations Commission request to be reappointed for another three-year term. Uh, Mr. John A. Lane from Gatesville. Ms. Fanny Spivey from Gatesville. Uh, Mr. T.C. Vaughn from Fort Island Road, and Mr. Waylon Jordan uh, from Gatesville. Mr. 
Chairman, I'll make a motion that we um, accept the reappointment of the four listed uh, citizens of the county to this uh, Human Relations Commission. Second. All right, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed like sign. All right, next I have a appointment of Mr. John C. Wolfer. You have a, uh, I think you've got a. Okay, we'll go with Sharon. Okay. We've got uh, this uh, record retention disposition schedule. The, the commissioners like to ask, ask you a question if uh, okay. about it and you know, to be sure what we got going on here so we'll know more about it. Yeah, yeah Sharon, uh, in the past, generally we've dealt with holding records for a number of seven years or three or whatever. Okay. And uh, it has the term up here now, uh, the records can be destroyed when the administrative value ends. I was just wondering if you had some kind of process to, to determine when the administrative value of these records come um, in. Well, we take applications for birth certificates, death records, things of that nature. We usually keep those applications for a year. And the Vital Records Office has told us that after a year, there's no need to hold on to an application things of that nature, um, things when we're working on our budget, notes that we have taken when after the budget is done. I mean, well, I usually hold on to that for a year. There's no need to keep things. So they basically, no this, is, this is the thing that's determined by that's you right. uh, right. for, for uh, objects that you understand and need to be taken care of. Not directly permanent records. No, 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 no. Okay. This is just applications. With, when people come in to apply for a certified copy of records. We keep that application for a year just to show who came in and applied for it. After a year, there's, that application is of no value. That's not a permanent record. Mm -hmm. So, so okay. what you're asking for is more administrative paperwork, not the actual records no, not, themselves, because the they have their records. own schedule. No, that's right. Okay. Any other questions, gentlemen? Are, are those applications that you're referring to, Sharon, are they, are they kept electronically after that? No. Or just, no, just whatever's recorded, just not the paper. application? You know, they're just a paper application. We asked a person to show identification, and they feel like the type of record, the information as far as um, the individual's name and the date, their address, their signature, and we keep that on record for a year. Okay. okay. So these would be? Uh, Marriage shredded. applications we keep three years. And they would be shredded? Sure. They would be shredded, yeah. We shred all of that info. Okay. okay. All right. Any other questions, gentlemen? If not, we'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, disposition schedule. So moved. Second. Motion okay. and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All Thanks. those like that. Okay. Thank you. And congratulations on your victory. I know you didn't have anybody running against you, but you still <laughs> no. won. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> All right. Okay. Uh, one more I've got here is the reappointment of Anna Howell to the county nursing home. Oh, we'll skip, skip John Walker. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I started it. Never finished it. Let me find it where I laid it back. Anyway. All right. Uh, Mr. John Wolfrey has shown interest. Uh, we've been trying to get a uh, uh, citizen on the Northeast Workforce Development Board since this re rebuilding and uh, that was decided uh, last year. Um, we have not at this point in time. We have no members on the board. Uh, I sit on the consortium for the rest of this month, uh, and Mr. Wolfrey has shown an interest uh, to uh, sit on this board. You have his application before you, and uh, Henry, you know Mr. Wolfrey. If, would you like to make a yeah, comment um, or two? Uh, Mr. Wolfrey is a businessman. He's self-employed. He's in the trucking business. And when we talked to workforce development, that was unique because you have a lot of young people that are interested in getting into that business, and they feel he would be very valuable on the board uh, uh, because he could provide some insight and, and guidance as well. Uh, as you see, he's been in the business a number of years, uh, and I, they feel as well as uh, I believe that he would bring something uh, some good uh, uh, observations and values to the table. Uh, he's a resident of Gates County. He's, uh, he has a bachelor's degree. Uh, I would recommend that we would uh, submit his name to the Workforce Development Board uh, for acceptance. They've already 
preliminary accepted him, but uh -huh. we have to formally uh, accept him. All right. Any other questions about Mr. Wolfrey? If not, we'll entertain a motion to approve his application for the to join the as uh, county's representative on the Northeast Workforce Development Board. The other seat will eventually be filled by the chamber. Their recommendation will go to the the next. There's another seat in for Gates County that will be required the chamber to um, approve. Jonathan, uh, Jonathan has an expression. Uh, yeah. I want to verbalize that. All right, uh, we've got a motion to accept Mr. Wolfers. A second? Aye. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. What is the term on that? When is the term of I believe it's, I can't remember. I believe it's three years. I'm not sure. We've had, we haven't had, the board was reformed last year when, uh, as a consortium that I sat on, we dissolved the existing board. And started over new because it's ineffectiveness, and uh, we haven't. Gates County has have, we've had two people on the board, and both of them has removed themselves from the board. One of them actually never showed up for that board, so uh, we're going to uh, work on that. If, if I could here, the chamber appro actually approved a representative about six months ago. That person, due to uh, an interpretation that we disagree with at the Albemarle Commission, has deemed that person not qualified. So if you will call Diane in my office, she'll give you the contact out there, and then you, the chamber can start their nomination of who they want. All right, that's the last I have. The next thing we've got is our manager has no, some and, uh, and how. Oh, I done skipped another one. Gosh. I'm getting seen out here, guys. All right. Uh, we need a, uh, we've got a request for reappointment of... Uh, Mr. Miss Ann Howell to the Gates County Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee. Uh, the the uh, a, the um, this is it. You me the wrong one, didn't you? No. All right. Um, this is uh, for Miss Ann Howell. I am writing to request the reappointment of Miss Ann Howell to the Gates County Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee. Miss Howell is committed to serving Gates County residents, which makes her asset to the community uh, to the committee I spoke briefly with Ann and found that she's willing to continue serving on the board therefore I'm re requesting Miss Howell's reappointment at your next board meeting and this letter um, comes from Miss Deborah Sheard a re regional omnibusman I like that one okay. Mr. Chairman Miss um, Howell is one of the first ones here today and uh, she's not here right now and uh, I know that she had an, an obligation uh, that she had to go to. Um, but I would like to make a motion to accept her to serve on this committee. All right, we have a motion. Do we have second. a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. All right, I think I'm finished now. Uh, next, on the, uh, the uh, Toby Chapel has some uh, recommendations from my personnel board. Mr. Chairman, the personnel board met on October 3rd and dealt with three different issues. I'll, uh, one of the issues I think Sandy's going to speak on. Uh, the third one I think the chairman probably would be better to speak on and, and then we'll go from there. So the first one is there was a part-time position that was approved in the budget in the finance department. It was filled, however, due to scheduling conflicts, that person wasn't able to work during the day. So we re-advertised for a person that could work during the day that could actually be there to deal with the employees. Uh, the applications were non-stellar, to say the least. Uh, I believe Sandy's here to, to attempt to get that position reclassified into full-time. She's already identified all the funds to pay for this, and it comes with a recommendation to do this from the personnel board. Do I have any questions for Sandy? She's, uh, the, the, the personal board discussed this and, and how this position would work. Uh, it was determined that we would recommend it, that it would be part of her department and it would answer to her as a department director, I believe is how we determined it. Right. Yes. Uh, we uh, authorized to go ahead and, and advertise and start an uh, application process uh, till, uh, uh, that with no hiring done until after board's approval or if the board approved it. 
And, and we did that interview process this week, and, and I'll tell you that we're down to two very, very qualified applicants. So what is the um, fully loaded cost uh, of this change? And we say we've identified the funds from where? Um, a portion of the funds will come from the part-time position that you all um, approved. approved. Billy Wynn was approved for an additional full-time dispatcher, and he has decided to fill that position with part-time help instead. The remaining funds will come from what is left from uh, those costs, including the benefits. And so what is the fully loaded cost of the change? Um, it's going to be approximately 40000 We've um, set the pay scale, I believe, at a 63, grade 63. The base for that is 32600 and with the benefits and everything else included, it will be right at about $40,000. So <clears throat> that means we got to capture $20,000 out of the rest of the, the departments, out of the current budget, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Which is already big cash. Right. For this year, it, it will not be that much. Obviously, it'll be for yeah. the remaining years. But yes, sir, that's correct. But the, but the, the money is already in, but will be built in the budget for next year using positions in this budget. Correct. correct. It's already in the budget. Okay. Correct. Correct. Well, so that would be, if you use the same budget for next numbers year. for next year, it would be the same money, right? You would transfer the funds from Billy's. Correct. Right. Yeah. It would just be moved from Central Communications to administration. There are no additional funds. It'll just be a reallocation. Without increasing the budget. Correct. So, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if you want to deal with these individually or if you want to deal with them as a group. Well, well let's deal with the them on an individual basis right now. Uh, any other questions on this one? This is a recommendation from the personal board. Uh, and... Uh, we have a motion to approve. So moved. We have a second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Jack, did you vote? Okay. Motion, aye. aye. Uh, all, all opposed? Same like sign? Johnny, did you vote either way? No. <laughs> okay. All right. So approved. Thank you. All right. All right. Go ahead with Yeah. That. The second issue is when renee hired gwen as her number two i believe in, and someone can correct me if i'm wrong but i believe the board told her that when gwen received her deputy tax collector certification through the school of government that she would be in line for a 10 percent salary increase mm -hmm. this is to simply codify this i think just to add to that you know the additional responsibilities and uh, uh, the, the fact that the employee has uh, made themselves uh, more valuable to the county. They're a certified employee right now, and it, and it warrants uh, a, a consideration of, of increase in salary as well. Uh, didn't the board approve this? I believe we approved this up front, but I think this is just a, a final approval now that she has received her certification. I, right? I think the reason why Renee has done it is so that it is in writing, that this okay. is not a verbal agreement, that this is in some minutes that can be documented that the board has agreed to this. I don't believe that she has actually received it yet. I believe she's done all the schooling, but I believe there's a time limit that would expire in the spring. April. That she, yeah, is that April, right. That she has to be with us so many years before she can receive the certification. As I said, she's already completed all the classes. She's simply waiting on the time to, to get her eligible, and then she will receive that certification. So again, I guess uh, are these numbers in the budget or do or what? Well, you're talking about in April, so you're talking two months of 10 percent. So I would say it's yes in the budget. Okay. Which I don't care what it was or not. I'm in agreement with this. I just want to know. I remember discussing it and talking about it. <coughs> I think you know I'm not opposed to using fund balance. <laughs> <laughs> We're probably <laughs> 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 We're sure of that, Johnny. <laughs> not a doubt. <laughs> We're probably talking less than several hundred dollars. Anyway. Uh, you, again, you're talking about a negligible amount due to the fact that it's 10% of a salary spread out over two months. Yeah, yeah. 12 months. Well, uh, over two months because you'd only get it in April and May. Right. Or May and June, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. We've got, uh, do we have a motion to approve this uh, recommendation from the planning uh, so personnel board? 
So moved. Motion, do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed like to sign. The, the third item is the reclassification of the administrative assistant to the county manager to an executive position and creating an executive position. Uh, I personally fully support this, so does the personnel board, but I'll let the chairman maybe speak to more because he brought this to the table. Uh, I was approached by uh, our assistant to the county manager about the salary for that job, and I asked her to do a, they did a salary evaluation across the state and found that the job of assistant to the manager was uh, generally, uh, we were in a very, a very low grade below everybody else in the state, let alone everybody in the area for the, the job that's uh, being done. I talked to uh, Chilwan County this week. Uh, Suzanne over there is in the process of being uh, approved and being uh, uh, moved up to an executive assistant as many of the other um, assi uh, managers assistants in, in the state. So uh, with that, we, uh, we the board, we had a discussion. We looked at it. Uh, we want to move the uh, recommendation is to move the salary grade from a, from a 54 to a 60 which would be uh, the current position from being around 60 G. Uh, the board recommends this. Uh, the job is a little bit more than assistance across the county. This is a, uh, does more with, uh, and with the next uh, few months coming in with new management uh, and new board, we feel like this is gonna be a, a very important position for the uh, county to, to maintain and, and keep up with what's going on with the county as we transition to a new board and a new manager. Any questions? Same question. <clears throat> is it in the budget or not? This was not in the budget. It would be done with funds that uh, I think you located funds from somewhere, didn't you? Or we would wait and see if we had approval to find so it the funds. It would not have any impact on the current budget? No. Mm -hmm. yeah. It would. This was not budgeted. No, it was not budgeted. Have to identify the funds. Identify the funds all fund balance. No. All so fund what's the fully loaded cost here? I well, the, 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 full, okay. the cost, uh, the term fully loaded cost implies it's something other than salary changes, which it doesn't because there's no additional benefits. So, again, I think you're talking about a, m I think it's a marginal amount well, over six $300 months. $300 raise. You do have FICA and, and cost. That do I happen. think it was like a $300 increase for the year, if I believe that was right. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's more than that. It's more than $300, I, I don't, I don't but I... Maybe yeah. hey, just for the I, end of the year. I think or I think this is something that can definitely be found, and oh, yeah. and if it has to be done in a budget I'll amendment, she can bring it back. Oh, right, we've got a motion made. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. Thank you, gentlemen. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, the next on the agenda, we have second citizen comments. We don't have anybody listed. Does anybody here would like to make a comment? Don't everybody speak at one time. Travis, I know you've been here and you got to have something else to say. <laughs> All right. All right, the next thing we're going into commissioner comments. Um, uh, Jack, I mean, Kenny's not here. He had another scheduling issue that he had to deal with. Uh, so, Jack, you're going to be first on the list today. All right. It's great to be here today. I appreciate you fellas accepting my challenge. Cal, if you will, if you'll make a mark on the, on the wall over there somewhere. That we're going to get out of here before 12 o'clock today. Fantastic. Um, thank you, folks, for uh, going to the polls session. and being good <laughs> citizens um, yesterday. And uh, just thank you for all your support of the commissioners and the things that we're trying to do for the county. Um, everybody have a great day. All right. Uh, Johnny? Likewise, I appreciate everybody being here. It's a new day. Uh, new opportunities for each and every one of us to brace for our country and to get on board as good citizens and try to do for the well-being of everyone included. Uh, ne the uh, next meeting or the one after that, I'm going to uh, make another presentation. I'm planning on it on property taxes, budgets, and long-term debt again. I'm going to be focused back on that with the, with the audit report that you just saw brought true to exactly what I've been talking about. and. Uh, I'm going to put some numbers up there to show you and try to have some more opportunity to save this county some money. So uh, I'll keep you updated. Even the night, I believe we have a night meeting this 
When is that? The 20th, 20, the 19th, I believe. If I get that done, if not, I will do that on the very first meeting in December when we have our uh, start up again, our new uh, uh, schedules. So uh, appreciate everyone being here good uh, today. Um, since we will be here before Thanksgiving, I'll wait until then to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Henry? I'll be glad to. Sometimes glad when to. we get in here, they kind of blindside me, and I'd like to have the opportunity to discuss the work you're going to do part of that. I kind of felt that way about the audit today. I didn't I have the opportunity. Didn't get it till yesterday. That's <laughs> and I appreciate you sending me. I did have it. Absolutely. Said. I got it to you within an hour after we finished it. And I appreciate that, Sam. Okay. Uh, Henry? All right. Uh, this is a special day for me. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everyone, that supported me during the re election or re election. And uh, I'm very glad to be able to serve you for another four years. And I, I really look forward to the next four years. We've got a lot of things started. And uh, I, I'm kind of anxious to try to make those things happen. Uh, we're in the process of hiring a new kind of manager. Uh, we've got a lot of projects out there on 158. We've just got a lot of things going. And, and uh, this provides us with the continuity to try to get those things done. I thank you and I thank you so very much. Uh, also, I'm very, I appreciate the turnout of the citizens uh, for this election. Uh, this is almost, largest turnout I, I think it's probably going to be historical, the large, yeah. largest turnout uh, that we probably had for Gates County. And uh, nice. that's the way it should be. You know, the citizens need to make the decisions and uh, certainly uh, the citizens were represented uh, in this election. I do want to uh, publicly state again uh, my appreciation to Mr. Toby Chapp uh, for the time he served here. I wish him well and all the best in his new job. Um, uh, as a county commissioner, I can say that Toby is one that, that responds to the commissioners. And, uh, and, and Toby knows that, that I, I come to him regularly. Uh, I'm a commissioner that I know the uh, county manager is there to assist us, and certainly uh, Toby has demonstrated his uh, willingness and, and uh, helpful attitude in trying to do those things that, that we need done, individually and collectively. Uh, my final thing is that uh, U.S. Senator Kay Hagan will be at the Merchants Mill Pond tomorrow from 3 to 6.30. I think there's some flyers going on out about it. Uh, I She'll actually be there an hour, I, I believe. I, I think it's 4.30 to 6.30. Well, she will be there. No, no. So I think the event is 4.30. Not 3. Okay. She will only be there an hour. She'll be there for one hour. Okay. All right. But anyway, it's, it's she's making herself available as well as her staff uh, for any issues that, you know, we as citizens and uh, uh, commissioners, officials of the county might have. I always like to try to make those events because... It gives us a little bit of a contact with someone when we got issues that we really need their support. And, and uh, Senator Hagan was one that supported us quite a bit when we were going through the OLF issue. Um, she wrote letters to the admirals and, and uh, lobbied and so forth based on the fact that we went to her. So, so if, if you have uh, any inclination to, to talk with her, please be aware that she will be here tomorrow on November the 8th. Again, thank you for coming. Thank you for a great uh, support uh, during the election, and I thank my counterparts for uh, playing their roles and, and, and being good citizens and, and uh, having a great attitude about, about the election. Thank you, Henry. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a couple of things. First, um, we uh, have we ever set uh, the new the, the the date for December uh, meeting officially for the first Monday? Okay, okay, yeah, okay. That'd be fine uh, unless y'all would like to do it now. The general statutes calls for the uh, appointment of uh, the uh, swearing in of new uh, county officials on the first Monday. Uh, we generally on on uh, December make that meeting the the first Monday in December. Uh, if y'all want to act on that now, we can. If not, we can do it uh, on the a night meeting. That'll be the first Monday, according to the general statutes. Even number of years, it has to be on the first Monday. 
Yeah, yeah, that's right. The okay. Even number of years, which is your election years. So that's going to be on the third. The ninth. Oh no. no. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Whatever the first Monday is. First Monday will be the third. Oh, we need we need you to act on it today or um, Thursday. The night meeting on uh, the nineteenth. We can do it today. We know when it is. Okay. I have a motion to uh, move the commissioner meeting to the first Monday of December as required by general statutes. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we move it to December third, uh, first Monday of December as required by the general statute. I have a second. 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 All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed like so. All right. Uh, next, um, I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. I appreciate the, the, the fact that we actually had 3,700 people vote in Gates County, which is right nearly half of what the elected uh, the uh, registered voters are. Um, I think this is a, a turning point in, in Gates County politics, so Gates County's uh, support of the politics that we have. Uh, I see Linda's already left. Uh, I do want to congratulate her one more time. 47, maybe 5,000. Oh, 47. I was told 37. Oh, nice. Okay. It's, it's, it's about 4,800. Four, oh, nearly 4,800. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, right, 54. 54. 53. So it's going up more. Oh, well over half of the registered voters then. Right. Uh, very interesting. Uh, anyway, uh, that shows the support of, for Gates County and, the, and everywhere in the, county, in the state. Um, another thing, this is my next, second to the last meeting. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really very proud of the audit that we received for our last year. The four year, four and a half years I was in office, so I made a vow that I would not let Gates County turn into Chowan County. I made a special effort working with the county manager and the commissioners to make sure that didn't happen. Uh, and I'm very proud of that. I think we all citizens can be proud of the fact that we've got a very strong and healthy county at this point because the, the trying times are coming. A strong um, General fund balance is an important thing to have within the next few years because I picture state funds going away fast and quick. Uh, so we may need this money, may be needed to support uh, our schools and uh, our law enforcement in county in the next few years to come. Uh, so I want everybody to keep that in their mind that we've got to think about past tomorrow, a little bit past tomorrow, because in three to four years you may see a big change in the politics of Gates County and politics of the state and the finances of the county and the state, uh, which every time the state's finances change, it affects Gates County drastically and, and, and all the other counties because what the state does not put in our schools, the, the, we're expected the counties to put into the schools. Uh, we'll also be looking at a new reevaluation in four years. Unless things change, values will go down drastically, so that means tax rates will go up. You must start thinking about that now because in four years you will see that. Not, that, that is almost a guarantee. Uh, and so there may be a possibility knowing that you got a strong fund balance to back up your county when you get to that point. And we have a very strong county today, a stronger county than we had four years ago, a very much stronger county than we had in 2007 when we were in trouble of going under the LGC's control with threats from them. To, because our fund balance has been burnt to a minimum. 28, 26, 28% is recommended by the, the uh, LGC for disasters. Anybody was in Gates County in 2003, in September 2003, and saw the disaster that we saw and the amount of money that it took to, to get us back running and operating again? Think about that for when you think about having fund balance on hand in case you need it. That's why Hyde County is in the back, nearly a bankruptcy state today because they, they, the last hurricane, they had to spend all their fund balance to survive the hurricane, and they still haven't received money from FEMA yet to replace that money. They've had to borrow money to make payroll. Well, so just, just think about that. When, when the word fund balance comes up, there's a reason to have a strong fund balance. And when, you're, when you live, live your life, you try to keep a good savings account so you can, if something drastic happens, you'll have it. And that's what the fund balance is about. Chowan County burnt $20 million of fund balance in a matter of a few years. And nobody was watching the ball until after it was over with. All right, uh, we've got to go into closed session. I need a motion to go in closed session. So let me, let me get the general statute, sir, it'll be on the record. 
Those general statutes 143-318.11A36. I have a motion. So moved. I have a second. Second. Call in favor, say aye. Aye. All right, y'all have a good day. Are we going to go back? Go out of closed session. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. All right, we have, uh, let's see, what's the issue we need, the first one we need to, uh, you wrote it down. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we continue with our existing uh, contract, uh, copy of contract, uh, as discussed in closed session. All right, we've got a motion to continue the existing contract uh, as discussed in closed session. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Aye. All right, uh, do we have any other motions or any other business we need to attend to? I'd like to make a motion that we uh, start our interview process for a county manager on December 3rd after the uh, swearing in of new uh, commissioner, uh, elected commissioner, uh, Ms. Linda Hoffler, which will be December 3rd of 2012, I believe. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? All right, no second motion dies. All right, Toby's got one more issue that, yeah, that, actually that needs to be taken care of. I have two issues. They'll be very brief. The first one is this is the budget amendment to do what you approved in open session as far as making the finance position part-time to full-time. I don't know if you all want to review it or not. Actually, maybe copy to it. It just shows where the financing is coming from. I believe, and I'd like to go back, and I believe in the in this commissioner's thing, there's something about having to vote on them, uh, even without a second that you have, that you can request a vote. Request a vote on what? Stipulation. On a motion. Have, it have depends a on what the board policy is. Yeah. If the board policy is to have a motion with no second, it seems to me like your board policy is to require a second. Yeah, our, our policy has been required for a second as long as I've been on the board. And that may be true. All right. I, um, here it is, something about that. On mm -hmm. a five-member elected board. Yes, sir. Uh, it just depends on the board's policy. Do we have that policy? Uh, it's been po our policy since I've been here. Is it written? Do you want, do you want to vote on this, John? Uh, well, it is important, I think. Well, you've got one motion and no, no second. Well, I've got to <laughs> I don't think you can change the policy, policy the wheel? process. It's in this book. If you, want, if you want to do the research on the policy and, and bring it back to the board at another time, it would be fine. But at this point in time, we'll, we're going to stay with the policy we've been doing for the last four or five years. Um, all right, Toby, you've got something here? Yeah, this is the budget amendment to accomplish the finance and that Sandy discussed with you about the moving from part-time to full-time. Budget, right yeah. budget, um, uh, budget amendment 24. It's, it shows the cost for the full-time salary part of it uh, is uh, we already budgeted for 20 part of half of it and this is the second part of it is that right this yeah this will complete the budgeting that you need okay she ain't here I mean you got any questions Toby probably can answer any of them because he's part of this process. Not, this this is what she explained to you when she explained the position we've so. already approved the position anyway this is assembly fund, which you already approved. We have a motion to accept the uh, proposal as presented. So moved. Have a second. 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 All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed like sign. All right. All right. Uh, the, hey, one last issue. This is mostly an FYI. When we when we built our library at the Commerce Park, they have had to expand their uh, water what's the word? retention pond. Sorry. Uh, as part of that. I'm going to use some of the construction money that we have that's already budgeted to pay for that, some of that expansion that is caused by our <coughs> building. So when you see an expenditure, that's what it is. Okay. Just an FYI. Do you know how page, much it was going to be? I think it will be somewhere in the $9,000 range. On page fifth, uh, 14, Other. 15, second not required. A motion shall not require a second. Comment. The philosophy underlying the requirement of a second is that if a proposal is not supported by at least two members, it is not worth the time it would take to consider the matter. This concept is not applicable to small boards. One member of a five-member board is 20% of the membership. 
larger bodies would not hesitate to discuss any matter that had the support of such a large portion of the members. All right. Are there any questions about retention pond? Because we're pond. discussing. Okay. I'd like to see us, uh, what our policy is. You'd like to see what? What the policy is. Okay. Well, we've already made the vote and it's been completed. You check, fine, check on the I'm, policy and then bring it back to the next meeting and we'll discuss the policy. I have no problem with it. Uh, can you look and see if there's a policy written? The policy is as, as we've been acting in the last four years, and that's pretty much a, a standard that we've been going on. All right, uh, any other issues? That's all, that's all if if not, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, let's see, we're not adjourning. We're, um, we're recessing until the evening meeting on the 19th at 6, eight, at 6 p.m. We'll I'll close make, session. I'll make a motion. We uh, recess until 6 p.m. on November 20th. 19th, I think. 19th. Yeah. All right, we got a second. Second. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. All opposed like so. All right. Thank you. We need this back.